Your rival is one of the biggest staples in any main series Pokemon game. They're competitive, make you strive to get better, some not as much as others. Each rival is different in their own way, and continuing my fact series, I want to cover them all and go over a fact about every Pokemon rival. But before we do that, let me tell you about this awesome game I've been playing, Raid Shadow Legends. If you're interested in a mobile role-playing game that feels like you're playing a console game, Raid is unmatched. This game is brimming with content, it's consistently updated every month with more content, but best of all, it's a game you can play on your own, or you can start a clan with friends and family. No wonder this almost six-year-old game still has over four million active users, and is still one of the highest rated games on the App Store. And if you need even more reason to try Raid out now, both new and existing players have a chance to get the free legendary Chronicler Adeline. All you have to do is log into the game for seven days between the 11th of April and the 8th of July. Along with that, Raid is celebrating the arrival of spring in Teleria that comes with a special spring hunt minigame. And just entering gives players the chance to win some pretty cool stuff. Hard to win a gaming console you may ask? Just simply download Raid using my link. Then head to springhunt.plarium.com. Then after you enter your Raid ID, start searching for some missing items to win some more cool stuff. Again, only using my link. You'll get a huge starter pack with an epic champion, Tyrell, from the High Elves faction, and another free starter pack once you reach level 25. That includes an epic Rector Draith. Come find me raiding in-game with the username AlexTagRSL, and feel free to join my clan so we can play together. Definitely give Raid a shot if you don't want to miss out, and thank you so much to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now, onto the video. A fact about every Pokemon rival. Blue. Almost every NPC you battle in Pokemon has their ace. Usually, it's obvious which Pokemon it is. By their level, or maybe they send out their ace last in battle. And Blue has had maybe the most amount of different ace Pokemon throughout the series. His ace has obviously been each of the Kanto starters, as well as the evolutions, depending on the game. In HeartGold and Soul Silver, Blue's highest level Pokemon was actually his Pidgeot, which was also the only Pokemon of his that had a held item. Probably his most famous ace Pokemon, though, is his Blastoise, with appearances in the Origins and Generations anime. Definitely the Pokemon most well-known for being Blue's ace. As for his last in-game appearance, where he has a full team you can battle, that's in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, where his ace Pokemon is actually Charizard, and Red's ace Pokemon in those games was Venusaur. This is most likely a callback to the Pokemon Adventures manga, where Red and Blue had these Pokemon respectively. Trace. Despite the Let's Go games being based on Pokemon Yellow, the final team of Trace is pretty different to Blue's final team. Not only is it possible for Trace to have a Raichu as one of his final Pokemon, but he also doesn't have a Raticate that eventually possibly passes away at some point in the game. So definitely not as iconic as Blue's team. Silver. In some early artwork for Silver, it showed him alongside a Houndoom. However, if you look at any of his in-game teams, there isn't a Houndoom in sight. Even in teams where Silver didn't start with a Cyndaquil, he still doesn't use a Houndoom in any of them. I guess Game Freak were planning for him to have this Pokemon, and eventually changed their mind. Wally. Did you know that it's possible for Wally to faint his starter Ralts at the beginning of the game? This is an extremely rare occurrence that was technically possible in the Gen 3 games, if Wally Zigzagoon and Ralts had very specific stats. And if Wally did end up fating the Ralts, the game would just continue as if Wally caught the Ralts. So, not really a big deal, but still a pretty funny accidental glitch that can happen. Barry. Of all the rivals, Barry currently has the highest level Pokémon of any of them, being in Pokémon Platinum, where his starter can go up to level 85. It makes sense that Barry is the rival with the highest Pokémon level, given that for a while, the Gen 4 games were known for being a bit more difficult, with trainers, for example, like Cynthia, having higher level Pokémon than other champions. Charon. He is the only gym leader that gives the player a badge that is shared with another gym, although at the time of giving it, doesn't exist. This is because in Black and White 1, Lenora was the normal gym leader that gave out the basic badge in Necreen Town, whereas when Charon became a gym leader, he gave out the same basic badge in Aspertia City. Might have been cool if his gym badge was more unique. Bianca. She is the first rival that picks the starter Pokemon that is weak to your starter. The rival picking the weakest starter 
went on to become almost like the standard, compared to when the rival used to always pick the stronger starter. So, in a way, Bianca was the first to do it. N. Did you know that N loves Pokemon so much that he uses a completely different team in every battle you have with him? Every single one has a different Pokemon, not including a couple where he's using the legendary. His teams are even different from Black and White 1 to Black and White 2. Again, just shows how much he loves Pokemon. Hugh. It is possible for Hugh's team to level down in the challenge mode of the game. When you battle Hugh in Undella Town, the Pokemon on his team are level 43 and 45. However, when you battle with him, after this battle, his Pokemon are for some reason lower level. This might be a glitch with the challenge mode, or it's just something that the developers didn't take into account. Shauna. She is the rival in which you battle the least amount of times during your playthrough, where throughout X and Y, you only battle her twice. She is more of a side rival, if you can call her that, compared to other rivals, since there are multiple rivals in X and Y. But still, compared to other rivals, twice is pretty much nothing. Tiano. He is another rival that's had multiple different starter Pokemon. In the first battle against him, the only Pokemon he has is a Corphish, which eventually becomes a Crawdunt, making his starter Pokemon Corphish, I guess? In the anime, however, his first Pokemon is Squirtle, so as you can see, he's a pretty big fan of water types, I guess. Hal. In one of your battles against Hal, when he has a middle evolution starter, the level of that starter is 16. However, the starters in Alola didn't evolve until level 17. Yet another case of an NPC clearly hacking. Gladion. This guy has a pretty weird inconsistency when it comes to his team. If the player starts with Litten only in the fourth battle against Gladion in Ultra Sun and Moon, Gladion's Lucario will be level 55. However, if the player started with Rowlet or Populio instead, then Gladion's Lucario would be level 53. This is very odd, and isn't really something that happens with other rivals. Is it maybe because the Litten line has a type advantage against Lucario? Or maybe it's just a simple mistake. Hop. Of every rival, you battle Hop the most throughout a playthrough. More than Blue, more than Wally, more than N, the absolute most. You have around 10 normal battles with him, and then even more when counting champion battles, and even when you battle with him in double battles. Beat. He is so far the only character to change their type speciality during a playthrough, changing from a psychic type trainer to a fairy type trainer when they became the fairy type gym leader. They, however, are not the first character to change their type speciality overall, as Jasmine, the Johto gym leader, used to be a rock type trainer, however, switched to steel type, most likely after her Onyx evolved into the steel type Steelix. Mani, she alongside Pierce, are the first dark type gym leaders. Clara, so I've mentioned this fact before in another video, however, it is so amusing that I wanted to include it just for people who still didn't know. On Clara's trainer card, if you look closely, you can see that her Slowbro is warped, which means that her photo is most likely photoshopped. That is a really funny detail. Avery. Him and Clara are the only version exclusive rivals in a Pokemon game. Makes sense why I don't really remember Clara that much, since I played Shield version. Nimona, the rival that had already completed her journey before even starting your playthrough. And interestingly, if you take a look at the gym badges that she has, they're pretty different to the gym badges that you get along your journey, meaning that it's possible that she had some different gym leaders along her playthrough. Maybe these badges were some unused designs that Game Freak decided to swap out. Kieran. This guy is the very first NPC to use a Master Ball, using it when you tried to catch Terrapagos in the Scarlet and Violet DLC. Spoiler alert, didn't go that well for him. Finally, let's take a look at some rivals in the anime. Gary Oak. He is the only character who has a counterpart that's a champion that isn't a champion himself. You could have said the same thing about Ash, until his time in Alola. Paul. He has battled Ash more times than any other of his rivals, in terms of full-length battles. He is also the first of Ash's rivals to be seen winning against a gym leader, getting their badge, and catching a Pokemon. Trip. He is the only one of Ash's main rivals that did not return in the Pokemon Journey series. 
Trip definitely was not my favourite of Ash's rivals. However, if you're going to bring back all of Ash's rivals, I feel like he definitely deserves a place there. Cameron. This guy apparently has a Watchhog on his team, however is never really shown to be using Watchhog outside of a scoreboard during the Pokemon League. Gladian. He is the only trainer in the anime where all of his Pokemon are in different non-Pokeballs. His Silvalli is in a Premier Ball, his Umbreon is in a Heal Ball, his Lycanroc is in an Ultra Ball, his Zoroark is in a Dusk Ball, and his Shiny Neoligo is in a Beast Ball. This is honestly pretty cool, and something that more trainers should do. Leon. Yes, Leon technically counts as Ash's rival in the anime. This guy is the first champion to Gigantamax not one, but two Pokemon in a single battle, aka he cheated. Alan. He is the only one of Ash's rivals that Ash has never beaten. Granted, they haven't really battled that much, but in terms of record against Ash, Alan's is technically 100%. Richie. Made as a somewhat counterpart to Ash, having clearly a pretty similar design. He was primarily given green and yellow as colours, to oppose Ash's red and blue, and even has similar Pokemon to Ash, being almost all in the same evolution line. It is a shame we didn't really get to see much of Richie in the anime. And that's a fact about all the Pokemon rivals, including some extras. Let me know what other facts you want me to cover in the future, and please do leave a like if you enjoyed, as it does help the video out. Subscribe for more Pokemon videos in the future, do be sure to check out Raid if you haven't already, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.